Hello. Yes, Kuldeep, we can hear you. Go ahead. Hello everyone, I'm Kuldeep here to tell me, I'll be giving you a basic overview of uh, HTTP request smuggling, uh, what it is, what what made this, uh, what makes the, uh, what makes this vulnerability happen, and uh, what kind of exploitation scenarios uh, we will get, and, and uh, other basic overview of it. Though we will not go any advance in the in, in this session, because, uh, because it is a very vast topic, so I'll be giving you a short overview. First of all, I have worked as a security analyst for almost a year. Uh, I've, I've been also uh, be I, I, I was also training cops in the past. Uh, I'm an active Nalamda volunteer. I've been uh, I've been volunteering since like uh, two years now. Uh, I look forward to research and read about the uh, use in uh, infosec stuff in my free time. Uh, and yeah, I'm also a student. So today what I'm going to cover it. Yes, Kuldeep, we can hear it. We can't see your screen. Yes, it's good now. Is where does the vulnerability lie? So, what is the vulnerability, and where does it lie, and uh, how how uh, how is it possible to exploit this? And uh, the second point is two concepts. So, what concepts are ex uh, ex exactly required to exploit in order to understand this vulnerability? Then, in types of request modeling, then we will see practical example of uh, request modeling. Then we will see what kind of exploitation scenarios it has, and uh, how to prevent it. Uh, so usually you visit. Uh, so usually you, you visit some website and uh, see uh, that uh, most websites today has uh, called as load load balancer or uh, or, or reverse proxies or. So uh, an example of load balancer is uh, Cloudflare. Uh, fa fastly they provide very good load balancers. So so usually what happens is. Uh, this is this is the uh, uh, visualization of what happens uh, when load balance is, is there. So you, this is the, the yellow one is user one. It uh, sends a request to example.com. Here the yellow one is his request. It gets sent to load balancer. Load balancer validates the request and uh, and forwards the request to upgrade backend server. Then another user, which is user two. Sends uh, sends request to example.com, which gets sent through uh, load load balancer, and uh, and load balancer processes it and sends to backend server. So this this is the basic visualization that uh, what actually happens. Uh, but what vulnerability here is, uh, uh, like when an attacker sends an ambiguous request like to this red and yellow one. It gets processed as uh, with uh, gets processed by load balancer and uh, it looks like uh, looks like uh, it is a valid request and gets sent to and gets sent to backend server to process it. But when it processed by the backend server, it looks like the uh, it looks like a 
uh, it looks like two requests. Uh, one request is here, one is this uh, red one, and the other the yellow one you can see, uh, which will get repented to the other user, another user's request, which is user two, uh, as you can see here. So this is uh, this is the overview of the vulnerability, and now we will see in D and D. So the first concept, uh, first concept required to understand this vulnerability is the tongue transfer encoding. So there are many trans uh, transfer encoding techniques, but uh, the specifically we are looking, uh, we are looking at is tongue. So how the data is, so in, uh, so in tongue encoding the data is uh, sent in chunks. So these are the uh, these are these are the chunks you can see. Uh, for example, the there is hello chunk. So the five here denotes the the data length. So for example, if we are sending hello, hello H E L L O, which is uh, uh, with uh, with length is uh, five five characters. So five is uh, so first five is sent, then the C R L F and the actual data. Then again, eight is sent, then everyone and the C R L F uh, and the terminating chunk. So zero denotes denotes that there is no length and it is uh, and it is terminate. Then meaning that there are no chunks after this one. The the server should uh, stop uh, stop waiting for the next chunk as uh, this is the terminating chunk. So there is there are basically two ways to decide where the request ends, either using content length or using transfer encoding. So uh, so using content length. Uh, the, the server checks content length and the uh, reads uh, reads five characters and after it uh, and after it read, uh, it has read uh, five characters it will stop uh, it will just terminate the request because the content length has reached uh, and using transfer encoding or using transfer encoding so in transfer encoding you can see the the encoding transfer encoding chunk is chunk so it will uh, there is length five so it will one two three four five is hello and it will read five Five characters. Then, then the next chunk is uh, of eight character length. So it will read everyone, and the next chunk is zero. So, which means the uh, so which means uh, there there is there are no chunks after this one. So server will so server will uh, stop reading after this one. Now, what the vulnerability here is? Uh, the vulnerability actually here is the desynchronization between the between the request. Uh, uh, there is desynchronization de between uh, front end server and back end server. Front end is the uh, load balancer and back end is the actual web server. So there is desynchronization between deciding where the content, uh, where the request ends. So the so the uh, so when the front end or uh, load balancer checks uh, content length, the content length first, and the back end back end server checks transfer encoding. So that 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 is when C A T uh, attacks are possible and when the front end checks transfer encoding header and the back end checks content length header then when uh, T T C L vulnerabilities arise but uh, in some cases what happens is uh, both of the servers both, both of the servers uh, rely on transfer encoding header so what we do in uh, so what we do in the, that case is we obfuscate the uh, transfer encoding header in some way that one of the server is not able to uh, process the, the header. So, it, so what will, it will do is just it will just ignore uh, the transfer encoding and process it using the uh, content length. So, so it will make uh, so this is just uh, content length CLT or DCL attack with just uh, uh, in an advanced way. So, we will first see at uh, CLT decentralization. So here is this uh, request which we are sending. Uh, we are sending it transfer encoding as chunk and content length 10. So it will uh, so the so the front end server uh, is uh, relying as <coughs> as this is a CRT attack. The front end server will see that the content length is 10 and it will read 10 characters from it and uh, and see uh, this is where this request is where it will it will pass it to the back end server. But what backend does is they, uh, it will read transfer encoding header, and it is it it will see that okay this is chunk and uh, it will wait for the chunks. But the first chunk is receives a zero chunk which which means that uh, there are there is no data after this chunk, so it will stop reading, and the the trailing hello will get ignored. But uh, what ha what will happen is the when the next user will request will send request to the server, 
it will get appended uh, sorry it will get repented to the request so the users so, so the next user sends get get uh, root directory http 101 so uh, hello will uh, get repented to the get uh, and it will read as hello get and server will uh, respond with an error because the, uh, there is no such method as hello get the next is uh, dcl desynchronization so dcl desynchronization uh, front end CL check transfer encoding header and the back end checks uh, content length header so front end sends uh, uh, so we we send a request like this front end checks so uh, transfer encoding is chunk so it will take uh, first chunk it will, it will read as the uh, three data is two and the next chunk is terminating chunk so it will see uh, so it will see that uh, that the request is valid it will get passed uh, it will get passed to the backend server and the, when the backend server checks it will it, it will check content length header and it will read as uh, okay there is uh, content length as two it will read two bytes uh, two bytes from it and the trailing foo zero will get uh, will get ignored and will prepend it to the next request and again will again the next next uh, user next user which is requesting will get a corrupted response uh, that uh, no such matter as foo uh, zero get Now in TET desynchronization, uh, TET desynchronization, the you can see we have sent two two transfer encoding uh, headers. So what happens in this one is uh, the front end also relies on the T, uh, transfer encoding header, and the back end also rela relies on transfer encoding header. So what we will do is we will obfuscate transfer encoding header in some of the way that uh, it is not processed by one of the servers. Uh, uh, whether it is the front end or the back end, so we will see. Uh, so we send just like this, and uh, when the front end passes it, uh, processes it, it will it will see the transfer encoding header is full. So it will uh, it will stop uh, processing the user transfer encoding, but instead will re uh, process using content length because the, this this header is not valid. So it will read eight, eight bytes from it. And uh, and and see that request is valid because uh, the, the eight bytes are sent, so it will pass pass it to the backend server. But when the backend server is processing, it will see it will ignore the invalid foo one and uh, process the valid transfer encoding the header, which is chunk. So it it will read that uh, the first chunk is sent is uh, terminating uh, terminating chunk, meaning that uh, there are no chunks after this one. And the hello will get ignored will get ignored by this request. And will prepend it, and will get prepended to the other request. Prepended uh, to the next request, meaning the uh, get will get will be prepended by hello, meaning hello it will uh, read like hello get. So I guess uh, we are done with theory, and we'll we'll do some hands on now. Now let's first take a look at uh, the CLED lab. Okay, access to lab. So the lab is up. Let's copy this and paste and in Mozilla because I like to do it in Mozilla. Here the request is sent to the uh, to the server. So so what we'll do is uh, click on it and uh, send to and uh, launch Muggle Probe. 
So the smuggle probe or uh, request smuggler is in is the bob extender to automate uh, request attacks because uh, because what happens is uh, we as humans cannot uh, uh, cannot uh, guess the cannot uh, guess actually but uh, we cannot uh, decide the request uh, content length by man manually. So you you will have to go to extender and uh, install bob uh, install this extension which is which is HTTP request smuggler. So after you will install it, you will uh, get you will get an option like uh, this launch smuggle code. So you have to click on it and uh, and uh, keep it as a, uh, it is, as default options which are ticked and and click to and and press enter to send. Go to extender extensions and uh, output to and uh, to smuggler request smuggler. And output to see its output. So it will take some time to process the output. Uh, it will take some time because what happens is you get to, you have to send multiple requests and wait for uh, and wait for delay to check uh, uh, to confirm the vulnerability. So so it will send multiple requests uh, multiple times and so it will take a while. So while this is running, let's uh, try it using just uh, repeater. So here the get request is sent, but uh, we want to change it to post. Kuldeep, we can see uh, only see your browser window. We can't see the box. Uh, let me see. Is my buff visible? Uh, no. If you can share the entire desktop, I think share. it will be visible. Yeah, we can see the bulb window now. Is my screen with? Okay, so let me just do it once again. So I just found a CIT lab from uh, Bob Web Security. Uh, we visited it, and uh, in the bulb, yes. and in the copy, we we uh, right click on the request and send to launch smuggler probe. So what uh, smuggler probe is? It is a bulb extension for to automate request smuggling attacks. It will it will give uh, it will it is used to verify <coughs> the uh, the vulnerability. So you can go to extender bf store and download it from there. So uh, we as humans cannot uh, cannot guess uh, content length uh, and check uh, and check vulnerabilities. So so the, what uh, this tool does is this automates the whole thing. So you don't have to do it by yourself. Let's go to view. So so right click and click launch to smuggle group. So I have already launched it. So uh, let me see in the extender B uh, actions and uh, and output here. Okay. So here you can see that uh, after equal equal to uh, here is the request. So we'll copy the request. And we'll see to copy and uh, go to repeater. Uh, now here, what you will need to do is uh, click on uh, repeater tab and uh, uh, uncheck update content length. 
because if we update content and then then there is a, then we will not be able to exploit the vulnerability. So here is so uh, we will send it to G because uh, there is no. Because in the lab lab description you can see that uh, to solve the lab smuggle a request to backend to the backend server so that the next request is processed by the backend server appears to be used the method G post. I have sent the uh, gauge in this to G. So the next uh, so when the next post request is received, it will read as uh, it will uh, prepend uh, it will prepend this G to that post request. So it will appear as the uh, unknown method g post so right click and click on smuggle attack which is c i d so this takes quite a few attempts to to actually hit the target so let's do it again so I guess we need to remove this G from here and it's the content length by uh, 5 right click and see it here and here, here what uh, you, you will need to do is uh, it is said that this will prefix the victim request and edit it to achieve the desired effect meaning uh, th this request will will be sent before the before the next request so so let's change it to g g post and uh, root attack again There is something wrong with content length. So let me take this time. Mm -hmm. Load it again. Right click and send to smuggle probe. And here you can see queued one attacks. After uh, after few minutes, it will it will show uh, what kind of vulnerability exists, what kind of vulnerability exists, so it, uh, whether it is CLT or TCL. It will show us here. So then let's try using repeater. So we'll just change it to four. I guess five is five is good. So there is definitely something else with front and length. Mm -hmm. We're getting a timeout. So let's copy this okay. and paste it to repeater. CLT. And change this to post. I guess there's definitely something wrong with the content length. So let's remove this and uh, let's go. So this is three. G. 
changes to G post. G force to root. Let's change content length to four. Let's see what it does. No code is not valid. Let's see the seizure six. Same turbo intruder. Let's switch it on. Let's right click and send to turbo intruder. is not receiving properly that is why uh, let me just uh, save this to some file so what we'll do is uh, we will uh, save this to file let's uh, touch Doesn't matter, but just doesn't matter, but looks cool. Report.txt proxy right click and launch us launch power groups. And It will show the turbo into the output which uh, which we saw in the console, but uh, sometimes it is issue because uh, because, uh, because it it is some issue in the Bob uh, itself Bob output console itself. will take a few minutes to just uh, wait when this gets completed. So just, uh, let's just try using simple repeater. So we send in 
post and hit it one on one. The post is same as post is same as this one. So this should work. Content length is uh, five and a CRLF and this one. response is bit delayed just change it to G This whole uh, request because we don't want to defend anything because we have already done it up here. This is the correct content length. Here you can see a 404 not found. Uh, even though this uh, request is sent to root, it is saying that 404 not found. And uh, in the next request, it is saying that OK. So what uh, this response meant that, uh, let me show you. Uh, this request, which, uh, which is <coughs> sending a get request to this directory, hopefully 404, it gets prepended to the, to the, good, uh, to the legitimate request. So it shows uh, here, let me show it better. So here we, we are sending hopefully for 404 uh, request <coughs> with this one and it gets smuggled to the backend. And when the next request is sent, it will uh, it will uh, it is a, le a legitimate request even though it, uh, it is uh, saying that 404 not found. So let's change it to our choice. So rather than uh, at 404, we will, we will change it to G post. G post to the group and uh, I guess it will show issues uh, when you don't use host header. Change host and attack. Here, we are sending this request. Uh, it, uh, uh, at the end of this request, we send a G post. Now the this G post gets prepended to the next request. Here you can uh, here we have sent a legitimate request as, as you can see the post to root directory, but uh, it is uh, it is responding with four zero four four bit and duplicate headers are not allowed. Where is it? Oh, let's, I guess this is because of host header. So let's change it to X. X signal. X. Attack. Here you can see unrecognized method G post. 
even though there is no even though we have uh, requested it, it using post method so what happened here is uh, we have sent this request so when it is when it is processed by the front end server it uh, content length is checked so content length is 36 it will check 0 then crlfs and then g post and uh, uh, till the end of this one so it will uh, it will read it and so uh, consider it a valid request and transfer it to backend server at the backend server chunk encoding is uh, transfer encoding chunk is uh, checked and it will read terminating chunk and the this request is is then uh, appended to the next request which is this request so it will read as uh, g post it will uh, it will be like uh, g post uh, to the root directory http 101 1.1 and it will uh, respond with unrecognized method g post even though we have sent a post request so this was how to uh, solve this this lab so we will we'll see if it trace message here You can see congratulations you solved the lab uh, now let's try the next lab just tcl vulnerability this is the lab and this you have to do the same which is to, to send a g post request the Mozilla Firefox, let, let me paste this one. I, we should close pop into it now. And now right click on the uh, right click on the request and launch model probe. Press enter to start. So in this file, you will at the end of this file, you will see that it is start a queued one attack. So after uh, after one or two minutes, it will show. We are again getting a time of unexpected report. So we have got the report. I think the this report is uh, not accurate. Let me let me run it again. Because what uh, happened is uh, because of my internet connection, it, uh, it uh, received delay and thought this delay is of the web server. Let me just run it again to confirm. Right click and launch model probe. Can see queued one attacks. Again, it is again it is getting time out. Let's check this one. Copy. Send to repeater. Let me paste. Repeater update content length is unchecked. Like a right click and uh, smuggle to TCL. So this, uh, this uh, will hopefully trigger 404.
okay here's the correct one right copy and uh, paste it into repeater ecb to <coughs> right click and smuggle attack attack So this attack actually takes a lot of attempts. Now let me once check if it uh, if we are sending it to correct place. ACB four. ACB four one five. Okay, this is correct one. <coughs> I think it is because uh, the ch chunk is in, is in quotes. So let's unquote it. Smuggle attack. Oh, here it is. Here you can uh, you can see a 404. Not found. Uh, because the next, uh, because the uh, previous request uh, was uh, like this, for send post request, hopefully 404. So this request, uh, so this, this part got appended to the next request. Which, which was a valid request and uh, the valid request received 404 so let's configure it right click and smuggle attack so here rather than this uh, post re request we, we will send a g post request and attack So here you saw unrecognized method G post. Uh, just like in last, just like in last example, we saw that uh, in last example we also saw that unrecognized method G post. So we have bypassed the front end server. Uh, and as you can, uh, so let let me show you. Right click and uh, send to repeater. Chain request method. So here we we will send the post request. And server will respond with OK. But when we send a G post request, the server will uh, respond as only po only uh, only get and post methods are allowed. But this is not actually the web server responding, but uh, the low balance of the front end server is responding that only get and post methods are allowed. So what we so what we did is we got a request to the backend and the backend server responded it as a uh, unrecognized method g4 so so by testing this request we the uh, and the next users the uh, request got a uh, response got corrupted and uh, even though he has sent a legitimate post request he he, re he received a, a 403 forbidden Okay, so CLT hands-on uh, is over now. So by by exploiting this vulnerability, what we can ultimately achieve is uh, we can uh, we can convert an open uh, we can convert an on-site redirection into an open redirection. On-site redi on-site redirection means, uh, for example, when you receive uh, when you uh, receive HTTP HTTP the s dot uh, colon double slash example.com so it will uh, redirect to www.example.com so we can so we can convert it into an open redirection so uh, rather than it uh, rather than redirecting it to uh, www.example.com it will redirect to uh, uh, to any website of our choice then we can so we can by bypass some access control restrictions uh, so as you saw is 
uh, in in the previous example, we saw that the front end server was only allowing get and post methods, but we successfully smuggled uh, G post method. So just like that, uh, G post was uh, G post was just to test the method. But uh, rather than G post, we can uh, send put uh, we can send put request to ultimately achieve remote code execution. Then we can do webcast poisoning using this one uh, using uh, this vulnerability. Then we can we can also do webcast disrupt deception. Uh, then uh, we can execute return request. So for example, what uh, re re return request is uh, when you when you send a request to front end server. It adds some additional ad headers and uh, and checks to and it, it sends some additional headers and uh, things to so that uh, purposes. So when the backend server receives it, does not uh, receive the actual request which you send, but the uh, but the additional headers, uh, but 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 uh, the but with the additional headers, so we can we can. The expose the avoid additional headers which are being appended to your request. Then we can achieve reflected accesses. So in usual reflected accesses, what happens is you send victim a link, and they click on it and get and then get uh, uh, th and then they get attacked. But uh, in this one, we can just uh, smuggle a request and wait for uh, the victim to to visit that site. So he will get uh, so he will get attacked. And we can. Uh, we can uh, capture other users' request. For example, a request is being uh, written in some uh, written in some uh, somewhere. For example, comment or description. So we can uh, we can write users' request uh, to uh, to where, where where it is being reflected. Now we have seen how to exploit it, uh, but uh, let's see how to prevent it. Uh, th so the first thing is, is uh, first thing to prevent is uh, do not use load balancer at, at all. Uh, and uh, uh, this this might sound pretty stupid, but uh, yes, this, this is one of the prevention techniques. Uh, and even if you use load balancers, uh, you you need to synchronize both of the pro both of the uh, front end and back end servers properly so that they work in sy uh, synchronization. Uh, and if the front if the front end is accepting content length header, then the back end back end uh, should also uh, process a content length header. And if the front end is not uh, processing uh, transfer encoding header, then then the backend should also not uh, process transfer encoding header. And the third one is configure front end server to normalize ambiguous requests. For example, it receives uh, a request with content length header and transfer encoding header, and uh, which might sound cause uh, which which might uh, sound which might cause uh, ambiguousness at the backend server. So so immediately reject such requests. Or, e or even if you don't want to reject such request, uh, you you can uh, normalize such request. So yeah, this was uh, all, all about today's session, and thanks for Nalanda for giving me an opportunity to uh, talk uh, to give a talk here. Thanks to James Kass uh, James Kettle who carried out this beautiful uh, beautiful research. Portswiga Web Security Academy, uh, who just who just gave uh, who just gave us the platform where to test our vulnerabilities. Then all the mentors who 